they're one of the most secretive organisations in the world. There are certain secrets that you have to earn. Famous for unexplained rituals. Where were you first prepared to be a Freemason? In my heart. Describe the mode of your preparation. My right arms, left breast, and knee made bare. There has been this notion that we somehow use goats in our rituals because we're somehow satanic. And they face regular accusations of corruption. There are people who are genuinely afraid to declare that they are Freemasons. They're no more corrupt than anybody else. Whenever anything bad happens, there are a whole horde of people who are digging to see whether Freemasonry was involved. All the men in my family are Freemasons. I'm the only girl to go into Masonry. If a man can do it, so can I. For the first time, we've been given access inside this highly secretive society to find out the truth behind the intrigue. We have nothing to hide that's sinister. We're not trying to take over the world, despite all these conspiracy theories. The Freemasons are a secretive society that practice rituals in a temple and promote brotherly love. Although they have always been associated with men, we've gained access to the two female Freemason groups in the UK, the Order of Women Freemasons and the Honourable Fraternity of Ancient Freemasons. This looks like any other leafy street in central London, but this is the international headquarters of one of the most secretive and mysterious organisations in the world, and for the first time, they're exclusively opening the doors to us. This is the Order of Women Freemasons. There's a meeting today for the quarterly communication of Grand Lodge, where only members of a certain rank can attend. The most worshipful, the Grand Master, Christine Chapman. And this is the second group we've been given access to, the Honourable Fraternity of Ancient Freemasons. Right Worshipful Assistant Grand Master, whom do you represent? Hiram, Prince of Architects, Most Worshipful the Grand Master. And your duty? To lay plans, draw designs and assist the Most Worshipful the Grand Master in the execution of her work. Christine Chapman, a former bookkeeper, is hoping to be re-elected for the top job of Grand Master for another four years. The Grand Master has to lead and guide the fraternity and she has to provide direction. She is the um, person with whom the buck stops. If there's any problems, she takes ultimate responsibility for everything. And she is the head of the fraternity. The female Freemasons were formed in 1908. Their male counterparts have been meeting for at least 300 years. Their practices involve secret handshakes, rolling up their trouser legs, wearing blindfolds and even nooses around their necks. They are currently headed up by the Queen's cousin, the Duke of Kent. But Freemasons have been accused of favouritism, helping each other rise up the career ladder and covering up each other's mistakes. The Home Affairs Committee have already called for greater openness. In 1997, there were calls from former Home Secretary Jack Straw for officers and judges to make voluntary disclosures about their membership. By 2009, he scrapped the rule after the Masons threatened to take the government to court. There are people who are genuinely afraid to declare that they are Freemasons because of the the, the public perception that that somehow means that they're a corrupt individual or that they're somebody who is a little bit dodgy. And that's categor categorically not the case. I would say quite the opposite is true. Over the years, sort of, there's been a negative reputation that's been around Freemasonry, specifically male Freemasons, um, about sort of corruption and maybe favours going on. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. What would you say to that? Does that still happen? I would say that it, you are categorically not allowed to use your membership of Freemasonry for either financial advantage or personal advantage in that way. It's very much frowned upon by us. It's uh, something which we 
do not tolerate at all within our organisation. Now I've been a Freemason for over 40 years and nobody's ever offered me a favour and I've never offered anybody else a favour. You hear the stories certainly, I've not come across it in Freemasonry at all. We've had the odd person that we've had to ask to leave us. Since I've been Grand Master, only one person um, where their behaviour was not suitable for a Freemason. So what did they do for their behaviour mm, not to be? They mm, were convicted in court of a criminal act. Many people associate Freemasonry with secrecy and mystery. Why do you think that is? If it was all written out and publicised for everybody to read, there would be no point in anybody joining it because there'd be nothing special left for them to discover. You say it's to ensure that it, it feels special. Yes. But people could view that as there being something to hide. No, that's, this is the problem. <laughs> but we have nothing to hide that's sinister. We're not trying to take over the world, despite all these conspiracy theorists on the internet. And we're not trying to uh, overthrow the government or anything like that. <laughs> Do you think, if it comes down to it, that it might be better to remove that element of surprise? No, I don't think so. But Even if it might mean a bad reputation for Freemasonry? We need to preserve an element of secrecy for that reason only, because that's what makes it special. Has Freemasonry helped your career? No. I worked as in accounts departments as bookkeepers and so on, you know, a bookkeeper. So, no, no chance. <laughs> The police in particular have been heavily linked with Freemasonry. Is there any truth in police officers who are Freemasons helping people get away with crimes? Not that I've ever seen. We don't have many police officers in the Order of Women Freemasons. Um, we do have some, I know, but I've not seen anybody being helped in that way. So I can only speak from my own experience. Have you heard of Freemasons doing favours for each other? Yes, I have in the old days, many, 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 many years ago. But that was mainly in the men, and they were rooted out as corrupt. What sort of favours would they be? Oh, you would get um, policemen and, um, who were Freemasons doing favours for other members. Because there's this, obviously, this, um, this view that sort of you scratch my back. I'll scratch no, yours. it's not allowed. It really isn't. It's really, really forbidden in our rituals not to do it. You mustn't do that. And have you ever heard about that ever happening here? Not, not in women's Freemasonry, no. Female Freemasonry began in 1908. Possessing and working the same secrets mysteries, degrees and rituals. But the society separated, creating the two groups that exist today. We broke away from the uh, main group in 1913 because of a difference of opinion and we have stayed separate ever since. Although we are now on much more friendly terms, in the old days they didn't even speak to each other. So. With an ageing membership, the women are turning to universities to bring in younger members. I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm, that day's finally come. It's surreal. After joining the Freemasons seven years ago, today optician Roshni Patel will have a ceremony to mark her reaching the rank of a Master Mason. I actually don't know what happens. I don't know what will happen. I know the beginning of the ceremony, obviously the ending of the ceremony, but as to me being put in the chair, I don't know. That's a secret, that's a mystery. <laughs> Despite opening the doors to our cameras, they're not letting us film everything. The Order of Women Freemasons have not allowed us to film inside Roshni's ceremony in the temple. This is our grand temple. Tonight, where well, there's obviously a ceremony that's going on that we can't get access to, tell us why you wouldn't want us to see Because things. you haven't earned it. Roshni has gone through all these offices, all the way through the chair. She's learnt pieces of ritual, she's worked hard. Um, she must have been working for five or six years to achieve the installation into this chair and her reward for that is to be given a beautiful ceremony.
So Roshni would be sitting in this chair down here at the okay. moment before she gets to progress up into that chair. What does one need to do to prove themselves? Each degree is like a little play and, so it, and it's all learned by heart and recited. So you have to learn your part in it and do it well, come to every meeting, um, be there and be part of the team and do your part and if you're good then you get moved on to the next step up. In the lodge that's meeting tonight they will have um, a first degree, a second degree and a third degree and a ceremony of installation so that's four rituals and then you can go on to other degrees, um, 33 in all if you keep going to the very top. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> At the Honourable Fraternity of Ancient Freemasons, dear Lazaza Nikaela is about to pass on to another rank in the society called the second degree. I'm feeling very happy. I feel confident. I am excited. I'm not nervous, but I'm happy. You'll be hearing the questions and answers um, shortly. Now, that, I would say, is the most secret thing that happens in our fraternity. Brethren, but we're not allowed to see Welcome everything. To We've got strict instructions on what we can and can't film. Assist me to open the lodge. Dear Lazaza is being asked a series of questions. Each answer provides an insight into this secret organisation. Where were you first prepared to be a Freemason? In my heart. Where next? An inconvenient room adjoining the lodge. Describe the mode of your preparation. I divested all, all monies and the valuables. My right arm, left breast, and knee made bare. My right leg slipped short, and the cable too, and the running loose upon my neck. Is that what happens in the initiation? Yes. It's, it's a symbolic way of dressing someone for a degree, and it all has different meanings, what it represents. How do you demonstrate proof of your being a Freemason to others? By sign, token, and the perfect point of interest. What would a sign be? I took that to be maybe a handshake. No, it's a, it's a, a particular type of sign which demonstrates that you are one of those degrees that are described. And the token is the special handshake that you would give to demonstrate that you have reached that degree. So do you use secret handshakes? Yes, absolutely. Of course we do. <laughs> Can you do it with me now? No, it's a secret. <laughs> what happens and when would you do it? It's a secret. You'll have to join and find out. Then I'll tell you all about it. Right. And when would you use the special oh, handshake? It, it, within the ceremonies, there are certain methods. Yeah, grips. Yeah, they're called grips. But I wouldn't use it outside a lodge room, never. Why not? It's not necessary. Just shaking hands is... No. That's nonsense. That's silly. At the Order of Women Freemasons, it's a big moment for Roshni as one of their youngest members. We've heard the ceremony is almost over and Roshni is about to appear as a master of the lodge. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lovely ceremony. I don't know how I feel. I think, I think I'm in shock. Thank you. I think there's a bit of denial going on, but thank you. The whole process of me being put into the chair that was that was very emotional, especially by all my lodge members who I really care about. So, yeah. At the Honourable Fraternity of Ancient Freemasons, there's a problem with the votes. If somebody had made a mess of this and decided to photocopy it, it's void. It's void. Mm -hmm. Then it's void. void. After fears some of the votes had been spoiled, they've now been recounted and the new Grand Master is about to be announced. Most worshipful Grand Master, I'm pleased to announce that, um, that you, Most Worshipful Grand Master, have been elected as Grand Master. <laughs> The uh, result was close, but um, I eventually came through, and I'm now the next, going to be the next Grandmaster. In other words, I'm continuing as Grandmaster for another four years. Although we were given exclusive access, we still only gained a glimpse of the workings of this secret society. There was a lot that was off limits to us. 
Both groups of female Freemasons dismissed all allegations of corruption, but to shake this negative reputation and gain more members, they may need to be more transparent in future.